Hi everyone, it's Cindy from Cindy's Art. Thank you for joining me today with the, for this watercolor lesson. Be sure to hit the like button if you find value in this tutorial and be sure to subscribe to be notified for upcoming videos. I'm using a four by seven arches paper and I used my uh, with washi tape to tape the edges. And you can start off, this is quinacridone gold. You can use aurelion as well. And I am just gonna sketch in where I want some of the treetops. We're just gonna play today and uh, see what we can do with this rust ink. And this one turned out really well. The next thing I'm doing is dropping in a little phthalo blue. And this, uh, these colors granulate well, which means that there's creative effects I can get with them. You can't get that with the every color. But these two work really good. And the Quinn Gold is going to mix up with that phthalo and create a beautiful green. So I'm going to just work with wet on dry, which means that I've got my paintbrush loaded up with some water, some good paint in there, about a milky consistency. I'm dropping that in to the paper and I did the treetop and now I'm going to do just a little bit of a hill below and I'm not worried about painting everywhere because I'm going to use my squirt bottle and I'm going to spray uh, this in a minute to activate it. I'm getting out my small jar of rust ink and I showed that in my previous video. I'll link that here so you can go back to that and take a look at how you can make your own rust ink. And this does have a little bit of red ochre per, uh, pigment in it and that's a powder basically that's going to help create more of this texture that I'm looking for. So I already have my paint on my paper and this is still wet. So I'm going to drop in some of this ink and I'm going to draw a little bit of a tree trunk in here so I can bring that down. When I spray this and put more water on it, it's going to cause it to flow down and mix together. So again, I am just laying down some uh, nice wet paint. My basic colors, I didn't worry about what it looks like. I just want to get the colors on there. Then I'm dropping in a little bit of my rust ink. And then we're going to spray it next. We're going to watch how this um, uh, how this activates the granulation, and it's going to paint some of the picture by itself. Now I've added in a little bit of permanent yellow orange in there and then I went back and I added a little bit of darker blues. This is what it looks like when you're just going to play with something. I am just trying to add in a little bit of color along with this rust pigment that I'm about ready to spray uh, because I want to just see these colors come out for more vibrantly and they came out really good. So I just want to encourage you not to be afraid to try and not be afraid to add more stuff in and play with it. You can always use the back of the paper uh, to paint again. Um, but I am moving forward and grabbing my water bottle and I'm gonna squirt this and you're gonna see the colors begin to run. And as they run, because the rust and the pigments in there, it actually is going to start to split apart and granulate and this is creating a texture effect for us. So just watch this while this takes place. Now you can see the pigment in there and you can see the granulation. Granulation is where you've got these fine lines of like particles that are settling into the paper. So I'm continuing playing and what I'm doing is dropping in color. I've added more Quin Gold, I've added more blue, and then I'm going to activate it a little bit more. I'm going to turn my paper and tilt it because I want the pigments and I want the paint to run. It'll blend on its own. 
but it also will granulate more. So this is another good picture of just play with it. And don't worry about it if you mess it up. You can always try it again. Uh, pictures don't come out perfect the first time we do them. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time using scrap paper or the backs of paintings that didn't work out so I can play and do stuff like this. I like the way the top part is moving. I like what I'm seeing. So I've decided to switch down to the bottom part of my painting and just work with that. And so by adding in more phthalo blue and then I'm adding in Quinn gold and also some of that permanent yellow orange I saw, but you put a little bit of that in there too. By doing that, what I'm doing is kind of re-wetting this area and I'm gonna drop in more of the rust ink so I could get this activated, get it running. I wanted to give myself time to play with the top part, and then I could come down to this area, which I've already put some of those paints and the rust pigment in, and I'm just gonna activate it further. I'm doing that by making sure I have my paint, plus the rust ink, and my spray bottle. Those are the three things that I have to use to make this work. And so as I let this run, I'm looking to see do I have enough of the texture that's coming in? If not, I'll add more rust ink and a little bit of a squirt of water. Do I like the colors? If I want to add in more, I do. So that's all I'm doing is I'm watching this and it is a lot of fun uh, to watch and just let it sit and let it dry. Um, like I said, just have fun with this. And uh, when I add water below the picture, that's because I want to give the paint some more room for it to move. Paint will only go where the water already exists. Or when I spray a water bottle and it touches into where the paint is already wet, it'll move into where those water droplets are. It's a lot of fun. So I added in a few dots of my quinacridone gold. I just splattered that a little bit so I could just you know emphasize as being a loose painting. I also splattered a little bit of the phthalo blue and in the bottom uh, where the roots are you can see how there's a little phthalo blue that is spreading out. I, I really like it. It's just fun.
I'm just finishing up this painting with a few final details. I wanted to darken my branches. I wanted to add a few extra splatters, maybe a few leaves of grass here and there, uh, just to give a little tiny bit of detail. And all I'm asking myself at this point is, what does this need? And I tend to do too much detail. So I take time, put my painting aside, and then I'll go back to it, even the next morning. And I'll look at it and say, what do I think this needs? And in this case, I decided that I wanted to add in a few grass blades. I wanted to add in uh, that fence. And then in a minute, you're gonna see me add in a little bit of sky. The more I looked at it, I thought, you know, I think I want a little bit of uh, the blue in there just to suggest a sky. So that's all I'm doing. I could lift paint up. Lifting paint means I'm taking a brush that I wet, then I dry most of the water off, and maybe I'll run it across part of the paper to lift up some color so that way you can see where the top of the hill is because it's, it's lighter in color. So that's what I mean when I say I'm looking at final details, and I don't want to add much. I always think of whatever's in my painting if I'm gonna add a little bit of detail, it cannot be more than a third. And sometimes I'll say a third of a third. So if I split my painting up into thirds, I can have a medium amount of details or let's say colors. But if I wanna do final details, I have to look at the last amount I added and I have to use just a tiny bit, one third of that in order for me to add detail. And it shouldn't be more than that, otherwise, what I'm trying to do is paint a photograph and I want to add all these details in and make it look realistic. And that's not what I'm trying to teach myself right now. We're always learning. And I try to teach myself how to paint more loosely, how to have vibrant colors and how to keep it simple. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Be sure to like this video uh, to help me get my videos out there more. I don't get money for them. Um, and then also hit subscribe so you can be notified of when the next ones are coming in. You can always put in the comment section. I want to know what you're painting and how you're doing. Um, I'd love to see your work. Probably you'd have to do that through Facebook, Instagram, or other ways, or even on Patreon. But I would love to see your work. I'd love to hear about your adventure. People write me on here and I will respond back. So I hope you're doing well in this season. Please take care of yourself and your health. Painting is a great way to do that. And I will see you next time.